Charles is on the line from Kona, Hawaii. How you doing, Charles? Well, we're enjoying it over here. Um, I'm the, uh, as I told your screener, I'm the father of Tyrone Woods. Oh, um, my goodness. My, and, I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry been, for your family's loss. Well, you know, we were expecting this. Uh, when he left at the start of the summer, I talked with him. And I told him, I said, Ty, you know, for the 20 years you were in the Navy SEALs, I never worried about you. I prayed about you, but um, I, you know, I never really worried about a serious injury. He separated both shoulders in the boat wreck, and that was about the only injury he ever had. I said, this time it's completely different, and I do not feel good about this at all. And he said, Dad, don't worry about it. He says, I can't tell you who I'm working for. But it's an organization out of Washington, D.C., and they never allow anyone uh, to get lost, And which is true. Ambassadors normally don't get killed. So I was um, somewhat prepared for what was going to happen. I was afraid that he was going to come back injured, quite frankly, this time. You thought he and would come I, back injured? I was afraid that he might this time. And when I got the phone call at 6 o'clock in the morning, Two days later, um, you know, uh, it wasn't a total surprise, but I was shocked. And my initial response was, something is wrong here. Something doesn't smell right. Um, when I found out it was, you know, a, uh, <clears throat> a consulate. I've only been to one consulate, and that was over in Kenya back in the 80s. And I knew it was, even back then when it was pretty peaceful, it was uh, just like a fortified uh, area that you couldn't even get close to. And I, I said, well, how could this possibly happen? And uh, uh, there's been some uh, information that's coming out now that uh, they actually had a drone above uh, the compound. They did. Fox and News Fox News has talked about it. Now, I, I don't know that anybody outside the government has seen the video, but the video's out there of apparently the last part of the fight? Does that match with what you've found out? Well, I've just, I've just heard this just today. And like I say, I, I could tell something wasn't right. When I was back there at Andrews Air Force Base, uh, when the bodies were shipped in, uh, we were in a room, uh, a building, uh, a little ways away from the hangar where the speech was given. And for about a half hour, the president was there, the vice president was there. Hillary was there, uh, Colin Powell was there. And, you know, um, when the president, he, we had four kind of little pod areas there with each one of the families. And when he came over to our little area, you know, I could tell he kind of just mumbled, you know, I'm sorry. He, his face was looking at me, but he, his eyes were looking over my shoulder like he could not look me in the eye. And it was not a sincere, I'm, I'm really sorry, you know, that your son died. But it was a totally insincere, uh, more of a whining type, I'm sorry. And it was like just shaking hands with a, a dead fish. I, you know, I, it just didn't feel right. And now it's coming out that apparently the White House Situation Room was watching our people die in real time. This was happening. And that's it. I, I haven't called any of these shows I, or anything, but when I heard that this morning, this is something I would really walk into, and I, I hope that the public does not forget this. Well, Mr. Woods, name. we won't. We won't, because those names, I mean, I understand that Ambassador Stevens' name has been mentioned more frequently, but the other names are names that people who listen to this show have heard a number of times since since the killing of, of our four Amer fellow American citizens, because, you know, we, we admire what your son did. I guess it's just we can't seem to get the truth out of this man because they came out originally and blamed the video. In fact, at Andrews, when Secretary Clinton stood up uh, to address the crowd, uh, she referenced the videotape uh, from this movie maker in California as being to blame for your son's death. Well, this is what Hillary did. She came over and, you know, she uh, did the same thing, you know, separately came over to and talked with me. I gave her a hug, shook her hand, and she was, did not appear to be one bit sincere at all. And, you know, she mentioned that thing about we're going to have that person arrested and prosecuted that did the video. That was the first time I'd even heard about 
anything like that. And, you know, apparently even the State Department had live uh, stream and was aware of their calls for help. This was my son. He wasn't even there. He was he was at a state house about a mile away. He got the distress call. He knew he heard them crying for help. That's why he and Glenn risked their lives to go that extra mile just to take care of the situation. And I'm sure that he wasn't the only one that received that distress call, you know, come save our lives. You know, I'm sure that other people in the military, in the State Department, in the White House, received that same call that he would have received. And I'm sure that most military people would have jumped at the chance, you know, we are not going to allow this to happen. We're going to go protect that life. We don't leave anyone behind. We don't leave anyone out there on a wire, you know, just to, to die. We're going we're gonna to save them. That's what he did. That's did, why he sacrificed his life. Mr. Woods, how did your family learn the news? Um, my wife and I, we've been divorced, and I probably hadn't talked to her for about 20 years. I received a phone call that I believe it was the second morning after at 6 o'clock in the morning, and it was on this call, this cell phone, a Hawaii cell phone. We used to live in Hawaii, and I've always kept my Hawaii cell phone. Um, I received that call about 6 o'clock in the morning, and... Uh, and it was interesting. I'd been lying in bed. I had a dream that morning that had to do with protecting the treasure that's my family. And I, for about a half hour, was just lying in bed, kind of uh, thinking about, well, what's the metaphor of this dream mean? And then I heard the cell phone go off in the front room. I got out. Uh, there was a lady on the line, and she asked, uh, you know, are you Charles Woods? And I said, you know, who are you? You know, it's 6 o'clock in the morning. And she says, I'm with the U.S. government. And then I said, yes, I am, uh, you know, I am Charles Woods. And then she said, your son has has died. I have a 19-year-old son, which would be Ty's half-brother, who's going to college in Idaho. And I really was thinking that that was him. And then kind of couldn't really hear everything. And then when she mentioned Benghazi, I realized at that time that it was uh, actually Ty. What, uh, what does your family do now? What's the best way for us to honor, uh, you know, the service that your son did? You know, I would say the important thing, okay, he sacrificed his life. He voluntarily sacrificed his life. He didn't have to be over there. Um, In fact, my understanding is that he was supposed to come home a couple of weeks before this, and he voluntarily re-upped when they asked him to. He was going to... uh, He'd actually told people, he, he had a son that was born, Kai, which is Hawaiian for water, um, who he'd only spent a couple of days with. He'd already made statements that this was going to be the last time he took one of these assignments um, after his retirement. In six more days, he would have been home. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's not a matter of honoring him or anyone else, but, and it's not a matter of being mad at anyone either. But just what's coming out right now, kind of the whole feeling that I got about this when it happened is we're not being told the truth. Something fishy is about what happened over there. This just doesn't happen. And now this information coming out about, you know, videos being live streamed, calls for help being sent to the White House station room, whatever that is, um, it's just... We need to make sure that this does not happen again. We, Ty isn't the only military person that's willing to lay down his life for his buddies, for the other people that, that he works with. No so doubt. Every person in the military is willing to do that. And it would just be a matter of just, I, do, I don't know, um, for people to be continue to be courageous, you know. Uh, he's gone. He's dead. Um one of these days, I feel I'll see my son in heaven, um, and I'm not mad at anyone. Um, so it's not a matter of revenge or anything like that. You know, uh, Hillary said we're going to go and we're going to, you know, take care of these people that were responsible for your son's death. You know, like I told the, the Libyan, I think it was the president that was there in the hangar. I'm I total forgiveness. I I'm not mad at anyone. But it's just, you know, the truth needs to be out 
so something like this doesn't happen again, so that you know people like Ty, who are out there, principled men and women now, that are willing to sacrifice their lives, that they won't be abandoned by the commander in chief, or by the or, or by their fellow citizens, because we we plan to take care of them and their families. Mr. Woods, how how did your son end up with that nickname? I've always oh, I've wondered. Yeah. No, oh, with, oh, oh, well, well, actually, Ty, Ty was a name that I chose, and it was actually, I had a swimming instructor when I was young, he happened to be... Uh, uh, but uh, but, he, had a, but he had a nickname but, as well. Oh, oh, they called him Roan. I had never heard that, but some of the Navy SEALs called him Roan because of Ty Roan. I got gotcha, you, um, I, I, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I, I'd never heard anyone ever call him Roan before, before all this happened. Well, I Mr. always just called it Ty. Mr. Woods, He's God right. bless you and your family, and I'm sorry for your sacrifice, but I very much appreciate you uh, you picking up the phone and taking the effort to call us. Like I say, I, I I haven't done this before, but when I heard, you know, that there's a very good chance that the White House, as well as other members of the military, knew what was going on, and obviously someone had to say, don't go rescue him, because every person in the military their first response were, we're going to go rescue him. So we need to find out who it was that gave that command, do not rescue him. Mr. Woods, they were, they were only an hour away, too. As I understand it, there were military troops within an hour's flight away who could have been, you know, brought in by air. Oh, oh I, was, I, I was, yeah, I was told that by military that there was a C something or another. I, I don't know what the C was, some letters after it. One thirty after it. That could have come above that and completely carpeted the area and prevented it from happening. Mr. Woods, uh, it, uh, it is such an honor that you'd choose uh, me to call, and I really appreciate you taking the time, and, and well, you go with our prayers and our best wishes and our and our sympathy for your family and our thanks for your son's service. Well, we do need to find out who it was that gave the order not to protect our military people there. You're right, and, and by the way, that... Needs to have the guts to stand up and say, I was the one that gave the order not to send troops to protect because they could have, the military would have wanted to. Someone had to have said, don't rescue them. You're right. Mr. Woods, thank you so much. And again, the president was asked that very question the other night. Charles Woods is the father of Tyrone Woods, who gave up his life trying to protect our ambassador. You're listening to The Lars Larson Show.